Hello, I'm Darren Levine. I'm here to tell you about the Krav Maga self-defense and fighting system. Uh, Krav Maga was originally developed in Israel for the Israeli army. It was also taught to their security forces, their internal security, their secret service, and their police departments. The system is based on natural techniques, a response to danger. Krav Maga means contact combat. That's the literal translation from Hebrew. It is a modern day survival system self-defense and fighting system developed to bring people up to a high level of safety, personal safety, in a short period of time. The system deals with real-life attacks, such as attacks from uh, people who approach an individual with a gun, a knife, or a stick, or even approach by choking, putting someone in a bear hood. Headlocks, a variety of type of strikes, punches, kicks, elbows, and also whether the attacker takes the person who's defending down to the ground and is attacking them on the ground. It also deals with realistic settings, not just on the street, but perhaps in one's home, dealing with confined areas. If one is in their bed when someone is attacked, dealing with the office setting, sitting at a desk when someone comes and may approach you with a weapon or some type of other attack. So it is a modern system developed to bring people to a high level of personal safety in a relatively short period of time. The Krav Maga system was founded and created by an individual by the name of Emi Lichtenfeld. And perhaps if you understand his history, his life, and where he came from, you can understand why Krav Maga became the practical system of self-defense and fighting that it is. Emi was born in actually Hungary and soon thereafter moved to Czechoslovakia. And he was very close with his father. His father, Samuel, happened to be the chief detective for the Bratislava Police Department, and in fact was known throughout Europe for how many homicide uh, cases he had worked and solved. But the most important thing I think in Emi's life was that his father opened the first gym for physical exercise and self-defense training in Europe. The club was known as Hercules, and at a very early time in Emi's life, he found himself on the mats training in self-defense techniques, in boxing, in jiu-jitsu, in wrestling, and in fact, this club was used by Emi's father to train many, many police departments and police officers for personal safety. Soon thereafter, in the 30s, when the Nazis came to power, Emi found the difference between what was a sports competition that he had engaged in and what would be a fight for your life on the streets. He received really wide fame in his little community for fighting the fascists engaging in street fights. And he was fighting not people who were just duking it out with his fi their fists, but he was fighting people who were armed with weapons, sticks, clubs, knives, and even guns. And it, was, it didn't take him long to recognize that when you're fighting in sports, that's one thing. But when you're making a true life fight to save yourself or another person, it's a whole different ball game. And so the roots of Krav Maga come from his practical street experience in Europe. Well, once Emi left Europe, uh, he faced a two-year journey to finally his destination, which was Palestine. 
And once he arrived in Palestine, he ended up fighting with a group called the Haganah, which was the Jewish underground uh, that was trying to fight for the state of Israel. And what was his job in the Haganah? As soon as the people recognized his physical abilities, he began at a very early time training the Haganah and their soldiers in how to fight, and how to use a rifle, and how to roll, and how to do obstacle courses, and how to perform self-defense techniques, whether someone was attacked uh, by a choke or some other common attack, and also, of course, if someone dealt or had to deal with a, an armed subject. So by the time he made it to Israel, he was already working in the underground teaching people self-defense. And once uh, Israel was formed and the Israeli Defense Forces became uh, the army of the region, he was named chief instructor of hand-to-hand -hand combat and physical fitness of the whole army. His system, Krav Maga, was still a work in progress. He wrote the first manual for self-defense and fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat for the Israeli Defense Forces, which still, to this day, is being used uh, in the field. He is responsible for making the Israeli army, for training their soldiers to be the world-renowned fighters that they are. I think what is important ab about our system is that we try and find the easiest way to deal with a threat, the most practical way, the method that solves the most problems so that people are truly uh, defending themselves against all possible types of danger in a given scenario. Krav Maga spread to the United States in about 1981, and what had happened was is the Israeli Ministry of Education and the Israeli Defense Forces wanted to see this system spread uh, to people around the world as a sign of goodwill, to share something of value with the world. And in 1981, a delegation of 23 people went to Israel for a very, very intense course, a six-week-long course. After that course, there was a week where we tested. Uh, people received a degree, a limited teaching degree, and people came back to the United States and began to teach. The system took off in Los Angeles, and by 1983 already, there were literally hundreds and hundreds of people training in Krav Maga. By 1985, a few people in an unofficial capacity started coming to classes that were actually for civilians, but these people happened to be employed as law enforcement officers. And as soon as they saw the techniques, how easy they were to perform, how quickly they could be learned, how they could be done under, in real time under real stress, these representatives of law enforcement started to take these, this Krav Maga system back to their departments. And the departments started flocking to Krav Maga in about 1985. And we started to set up official training programs for police departments. Uh, basically, I, you know, I was uh, blown away by, by the system, uh, totally. Uh, uh, the techniques were totally unique. I, I, I had never seen techniques like that. Krav Maga is probably the best defensive tactic system to come to law enforcement in the last 20 years. Uh, it's, it's simple, it's effective, it's practical, and it works. All the officers that we've trained in Krav Maga end up having nothing but good to say about it. They love it, they enjoy the training, they've built self-confidence as a result of the training, and they feel when they're out in the street, then they have something to back them up. It's a, it's a great system, you know. They uh, they learn it very quickly, and it's a, it's a very it's a very efficient system. You know, it's hands-on, you know, right away. They finally had a system that could deal with true life violence. The type of attacks that officers face in the street could be answered through the defenses that Krav Maga provided. But more importantly. I think it was interesting that law enforcement recognized they did not have the luxury of prolonged training periods for their personnel. They can't give their personnel complicated answers for problems. In other words, they needed something that was simple and realistic. And Krav Maga fits that bill. And to this day, uh, state, federal, local agencies have instructors training their people in Krav Maga so that their officers will be safe in dealing with, with uh, real-life violent crime. At the time that the diploma was presented to me, the teaching degree, uh, Amy looked up at me and said, one day uh, you're going to be responsible for Krav Maga in the United States. And in fact, next summer I'm going to come live with you and train you. And in fact, 
the very next summer he was with me. And he did uh, live with me and my family and uh, provided me with incredible training. Uh, and what was really special about it is we started teaching courses together that following year. And uh, to this day, uh, my work in the United States uh, has been supported uh, by the association, the International Federation of Krav Maga, and of course, uh, uh, Emi Lichtenfeld while he was alive. Just before his death, uh, I was uh, promoted to a sixth degree black belt in the system, and uh, also one of only two people to receive what was referred to as a founder's diploma, a special recognition for those instructors who have contributed to the Krav Maga system in terms of exercises and technique and in development and spreading the knowledge uh, of Krav Maga to the people who need it. On the issue of how long it takes to become proficient in this system, I, I think it's important to note that this depends somewhat on the person who's training. But what we found is that within a very short period of time, let's say training in about 20 hours of training, people are learning how to give a punch, how to give other strikes like elbows, knees, and kicks, how to defend against those types of attacks, how to function in the fight, how to stand, how to be aware of their environment, how to flee from a scene safely so that you're not injured, and also a variety of self-defense attacks. The system really encompasses um, many more things than just basic exercises. It develops the fighting spirit. It develops one's ability to go from a passive state to a state of action without hesitating. Because Krav Maga is a modern day street survival system, we don't just rely merely on our personal weapons such as punches and kicks and knees and elbows, but we also are trained to use our environment, to use common everyday objects. We want people to function at their best and if that means someone comes to do you harm, you are entitled to use what you need to use to save yourself from injury and to stop them from giving you any type of further threat. Another thing that's very important is to be aware of your environment, to know where you're operating, to know what avenues of escape you may have, where you can flee to, how many other people in the environment may be a potential threat. So the system is a comprehensive system. We teach people how to function in their environment safely so that they can be free of injury uh, and free from harm. I've definitely found uh, that Krav Maga is sort of working out with a purpose. That's how I view it because I'm very interested in physical fitness and working out and it gets boring just running or biking or whatever it is that you're doing. And this is an activity that you're actually learning something and you're progressing through a system of self-defense that can benefit you in your life. And at the same time, you're getting a tremendous workout. I, I've done aerobics. It bores me to tears. I've done all sorts of sports. But um, Krav Maga keeps you interested. It keeps you coming back because there are a number of different levels. There are always new things to learn. You never know it all. On the other side of my professional life, I'm a deputy district attorney for the county of Los Angeles where I prosecute violent and serious felony cases, murder cases, serious assault cases, uh, armed robbery cases, and even three strike cases. And in preparing a case, in interviewing witnesses to crimes and also the victims of crimes, I've been able to glean from that what realistically happens on the street and incorporate that in the training methods we use to build people to avoid such pitfalls, to avoid the dangers. During my time in law enforcement, I have uh, encountered several situations to where people were victims of violent attacks. And if they would have had the knowledge of Krav Maga in defense against gun or knife, they would have been able, in my opinion, if the, if the principle was done properly, to survive the attack and not incur serious injury. What Krav Maga does, and the instructors of Krav Maga uh, try to emphasize, is not just techniques, but how do you function emotionally, physically, under stress, under the pressure of someone trying to kill you or maim you or harm you? How do you function? I 
think the important thing to know about Krav Maga is that it's constantly being viewed as a work in progress, that we never want to stay in the same place. We constantly want to improve and develop ourselves so that we're a better system all the time. And this philosophy comes from Emil Lichtenfeld, who was the founder of the system. And I think the system has developed uh, recently in terms of uh, teaching law enforcement, teaching tactical teams how to respond and function in danger. And uh, Eyal Yanilov, who works in Israel, and myself here in the United States, have taken what was, I think, really a military system and a system dealing with exercises for civilians and made it a comprehensive system dealing with people's reaction time, uh, with their ability to function in danger, and to succeed under stress. The idea was to create and, and, uh, create and develop a, a, a higher uh, level system, a more complete system. When I started uh, in the mid-80s working with uh, anti-terrorist uh, units in Israel, uh, I saw that we were missing some sections that were uh, needed for this type of, uh, of work, for this type of uh, unit. And I brought these things to Imi's attention, and together we developed a, a whole approach to uh, uh, other uh, sections in the, in the uh, military and the police and the law enforcement and the special units and the anti-terrorist uh, groups. When I'm uh, traveling around the world, and I've been in South America and Central America, and of course here in the States and in, in Europe, and from Israel, the experience we have, uh, I managed to see different problems, new problems that are uh, evolving or existing in certain areas in the world. The idea behind the self-defense is don't get hurt. Protect yourself, make a hand defense, move your body from the danger zone, make a body defense. Counterattack so the person will not be able to counterattack again, or counter-move, run away so he will not be able to attack you again. And if he has a weapon, and you can, and you need to disarm him, take the weapon from him. Kav Maga training is about control. Especially in training, you have to control yourself so you don't hurt your partner. But when you learn, when you learn how to control yourself, when you know how to learn, uh, when you learn how to control your mental state, your fears, your anxieties, your anger, you prefer much better, you perform much better in the fight, in the confrontation. We have worked very hard in Krav Maga to be responsible and to develop the most comprehensive training system in terms of physical fitness, fighting skills, and self-defense skills. And what we've done is we've realized that the body must be in good shape uh, to function in a real life uh, dangerous situation. So what we've done is we've worked out uh, a complete exercise program, a total body workout to help with strength so people have the ability to hit hard, to kick hard, punch hard, etc. and also to absorb any punishment. We also have worked on endurance so that people under stress will have the endurance to complete the task, to be able to finish the fight without being so fatigued that they can't function in danger. And of course, we work on flexibility so that people are able to do the exercises that are required of them to be safe. And I think what we, the compliments we're getting from people is that when they leave our workout, unlike maybe a typical health club type workout, they leave with a tangible skill, a skill that maybe will save their life. If you raise your hand and defend yourself against a knife that's coming at you, you may extend your life by 10, 20, 30 years. So the personal safety side, the fitness side, merge to give a total workout uh, to the person. Krav Maga is an ideal self-defense system for women. Why? Look at the origins of Krav Maga. This system was originated in the Israeli army. And we know that women serve in the Israeli army, and this system was developed with them in mind. Women in martial arts, it's a natural. I think that women belong in martial arts. That's exactly what it's for. And a martial arts like Krav Maga is especially, I think, useful to women because it's based on your instincts. And I think that it, whether you're being choked or taken from behind or kicked in the front, I like the idea that I don't have to remember what it is I have to do. If I naturally go to what my body would do and then follow it up with what I've learned, I'm already very much a hard target for someone, even after just a few months of training.
especially in uh, Los Angeles or in any big city, I think that women need to be aware of their surroundings. And I think that Krav Maga teaches you to be more aware of your surroundings. You know, the common reaction that many women have is, you know, I could never do that. But the truth is, they can do that, and they are doing that. We have so many uh, women that serve as police officers that are using this in the field and are absolutely amazed at the effectiveness. One thing is, we're teaching women not to duke it out with people, uh, especially men who are much larger than them. They're taught from a very, at the very earliest stages of their training how to strike vulnerable target areas. Their knee, for instance, is a lot stronger than someone's groin. They know where to strike to get the most out of their power. And along with training their ability to be aggressive, their awareness, how to strike and where to strike, women meet with success in this system. I think one of the most unique things about us are the type of people that are coming to us for training. Uh, we train on an official basis many, many police departments, and of course we train anti-terrorist units and SWAT teams as uh, our official duties with these departments. And you, on first thought, you must think, you must wonder why are we teaching SWAT teams? I mean, they have automatic weapons, they have backup weapons, they generally work in a team. But why we're teaching them is because we make them complete as a unit. We make them feel that no matter what the threat is, someone should grab their weapon, someone should grab them that they have an answer for any problem that may arise in the highly dangerous work that they do. It makes them complete. Karma guy, you learn how to use all parts of your body, all weapons, uh, all um, environment around you. I think it's like a, a completest martial arts, completest system, which uh, you can ever find anywhere right now. I've been, I've been through a lot. I went to different schools, and so far I stuck in here because of uh, I figured that's the, that's, that's the best style because uh, it uh, includes everything. Due to the incredible popularity of the Krav Maga National Training Center, we will be opening these facilities in major metropolitan cities throughout the United States, and we will also have official training programs in existing health clubs. Just be sure that you're learning from a licensed Krav Maga instructor. Krav Maga training seminars, instructor programs, apparel, Krav Maga services and merchandise. Visit our website at www.kravmaga.com.